Every year, it's the same story. What's the best distribution of the moment? Ubuntu with yet another LTS, Debian 13 freshly released, Fedora 43 that many people adore, Nitrux, Pardis, that one I never remember the name of, but that pops up on the homepage from time to time with the usual screaming thumbnail. It always looks like the best is simply the one that makes the most noise in the right week. But if we stop for a moment and quit playing the clickbait championship, the real question is another one. Which distribution truly embodies the idea of Linux in 2025? Not the trendiest one, not the most comfortable, not the one you install in 10 minutes and everything just works. The one that best represents what an open source operating system should be. For me today in 2025, the answer is just one, Slackware. And yes, I know, someone is already laughing. What do you mean Slackware in 2025? It's old, it's complicated, it doesn't have systemd, it doesn't have modern tools. Calm down, let's take a step back and try to think this through. In the Linux world, we've invented identity roles for everything. There's the distro for tinkerers, the distro for grandparents, the distro for people coming from Windows. For some, the answer is always Linux Mint. For others, it's that paid thing based on Ubuntu they sell you for $50 as if it were a revolution. Then there's the Arch faction, the Debian faction, the Gen 2 romantics, the nostalgia for Crunch Bang, the rolling release cult, the LTS cult. And I'm not pretending to be above this. I promote Void. I use it. I respect it. It's a great distro. But let's be honest with each other. We are all, more or less, fanboys. We get attached to a logo, to a community, to a way of building packages, and then we start telling ourselves that R1 is purer, faster, more secure. Meanwhile, all of this happens inside the big media magma. Shouted news, fluorescent thumbnails, titles like, This distro will change your life. It's a hyperbolic glorification of people and their skills. Someone does a guided installation of pre-configured Hyperland and becomes an expert in tiling window managers. Another one clicks two options in Calamaras and becomes a security guru. Inside all this noise, there is a distribution that hasn't made any noise for years, that has no PR, no marketing, no need to sell you anything, and that keeps doing its job with almost embarrassing consistency. And that's exactly the one I consider today the best distribution to use and to understand in 2025, Slackware. Here comes the famous dumb move by my brother. He regretted buying a MacBook Air M1, got himself an M4, and one day, after one of my sermons about how good computers used to be, he shows up with a surprise. ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2, Core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, practically new, paid a bit more than $400. There's only a small defect on the screen clearly stated, but it's still an enormous bargain. And what's the first thing I think? Perfect. Ideal laptop for Hyperland. Why Hyperland? Because on laptops without a mouse, it's simply devastating. Fast, responsive, built for keyboard use for a modern workflow. So I start looking for the usual thing, a stable distro, preferably without system D, that supports Hyperland well, maybe rolling, maybe a bit edge. Void, Hyperland basically not there. In the end, I land on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. It works, it's serious, it's a legitimate choice. But while I'm writing, testing, thinking about what to install, I realize I'm doing exactly what I always criticize. I'm looking for yet another distro that gives me the hot new toy already set up instead of actually building my system. That's when the light bulb goes on. That laptop doesn't need yet another super configured distro. It needs slackware. Not for fashion, not for nostalgia, not to play the terminal fundamentalist. Because I want a reliable system, one I don't change every two weeks, that lets me build my own environment around it, that doesn't impose a specific idea of desktop, of init, of tools. I want a base that doesn't hold my hand and doesn't hide anything behind magic utilities. Slackware is exactly this, the most basic and linear form of a modern Linux distribution, a system that gives you the bricks, not an Instagram-ready house. A few days ago, I was re-watching one of Linkarzu's interviews. At some point, he asks Tony, whom I've mentally renamed the software garbage guy, why Gentoo? Why complicate your life? 
what sense it has in 2025. And there you realize something. Many of the people who talk about our ecosystem don't actually know it. Gen2 is one of the most serious and solid distributions that exist. In some respects, it's even more rigorous than Debian because it forces you to have total awareness of your software stack. Flags, options, dependencies, focused optimizations. That philosophy, the ability to shape the system to your liking, is not a perversion. It's the practical translation of what Linux should be. Open source code, the ability to intervene, the ability to adapt the system to your hardware and your needs. Slackware lives in the same conceptual family, but with a different approach. It doesn't push you into compiling everything like Gen 2, but it still refuses to become yet another distro that installs half of GNOME when you ask for a text editor. There is no system deed. There are no magic tools that do everything for you. There's a simple, readable init system, scripts, clean configuration files. The package manager is not a supermarket that decides for you what you really need. It installs what you ask for, full stop. Dependencies aren't some esoteric object hidden behind a layer of abstraction. They're something you have to know, track, control. Is it demanding? Yes. Is it complex? No, it's not complex. It's transparent. The real complexity is the one that's hidden, that you don't see, that blows up in your face when an update decides to drag half the system with it. Slackware does the opposite. It puts everything on the table and tells you, this is the system, these are the packages, these are the scripts. Now you decide. This is where my cultural battle comes in. If you use Linux only because it's secure, because it doesn't spy on you, because it's not Windows, you're missing the point. What makes Linux different is not the security meme, it's the fact that you can, and should, get your hands dirty. Look at it, study it, dismantle it, reassemble it. Slackware forces you to do exactly that. It's not the distro that leads you step-by-step -step in tutorial mode. It's the distro that says, okay, now let's actually drive. When people hear about Slackware, the typical reaction is, are you insane? You have to install everything by hand, package by package, dependency by dependency. Isn't that too complex for 2026? The truth, for me, is exactly the opposite. The insanity is to keep using distributions that have turned into parking lots for applications and libraries. Systems where nobody really knows what's running underneath, what was installed three years ago, why there are five half-broken desktop environments, two configuration tools that do the same thing, and three daemons that start at boot, and nobody could explain why. I want a system where I know exactly what is installed. A browser, a text editor, a screen recorder, a window manager, a menu, a bar, a file manager, KDenLive, and the strictly necessary libraries, nothing else. Is it a Herculean task? Yes. Will it cost me time? Of course. But the result is a stable, modern, efficient, functional system that I know and control in every detail. Maybe I'll spend days figuring out how to make the audio work perfectly, how to handle the keyboard properly, how to integrate Hyperland cleanly, how to keep the system updated without dragging half the world with it. But that's exactly the point learning. Slackware is not an old or difficult distro. It's simply another point of view on what a Linux distribution should be. It doesn't aim to be cute, glossy, prepackaged. It aims to be honest. And in 2025, looking ahead to 2026, for me, this is the most countercultural and healthy gesture you can make. Saying no to yet another derivative with a dark theme and Hyperland already set up, and yes to a distribution that has existed for nearly 30 years, that keeps doing its job in silence, and that asks just one thing in return, that you use it with your brain switched on. Slackware is the distribution of 2025, precisely because it forces you to ask the question many people avoid, do I really know my system? If the answer is no, if you wouldn't be able to list the core packages of your system, if you have no idea what starts at boot, if you don't know why you have three text editors and two desktop environments installed, maybe it's time to try something that forces you to put your hands back on the keyboard for real. For you, Slackware might look like a new, almost exotic discovery, this weird distro that never shows up in the best beginner distributions of 2025 rankings. But maybe, instead of writing yet another pointless comment under yet another video, 
You could start running a few commands in the terminal, figure out how dependencies work, follow the path of a package through the system. It's not about nostalgia. It's about coherence. If you say you use Linux because you believe in open source, then sooner or later you have to get to this point, a distribution that forces you to look your system in the eye. For me, today, that distribution is Slackware, and in 2026, it will be my deliberate gesture against the noise, against the hype, against the idea that Linux has to look like something else in order to be worth anything.